Go and ask hardcore Golden Girls fans about their least favorite episode, and more often than not, the answer they'll give you is the season 2 finale, and it's pretty easy to figure out why. Shortly into this episode, Rita Moreno waltzes into the living room talking up a storm about her personal life in a way that suggests she's very much part of the show. Run, Dorothy, it's crazy, but I feel like how can I bother him? He's doing all this important stuff, saving lives, and I'm gonna bother him because I'm a little unhappy. Her character, Renee Corliss, is supposed to be the girl's next door neighbor, but she's never been seen on the show before. The Golden Girls is essentially saying, hey, just go with this. And then the rest of the episode plays out focused largely on Renee. There's her doctor husband, whose work takes him outside the home more often than she'd like. There's her daughter, Jenny, who's come home from college after a bad breakup. And then there's her brother, Chuck, who has multiple personalities, one of whom is a handyman who does work at Blanche's house. Not exactly a plot line a sitcom would probably have today. The episode is, of course, a backdoor pilot, which is the industry term for an episode of TV that introduces a new series or potential new series within the season order, either to gauge interest or just to get the audience excited to watch this new show. This is something my podcast, Gayest Episode Ever, is looking at during our summer Patreon series called Backdoor Pilots. Our full episode about this Golden Girls backdoor pilot is currently on the main feed, link in the show notes in case you want to listen, but I'm making this video because there's an interesting bit of TV history in here that's not so well known among the Golden Girls fan community, and I wanted to tell you about it. While we never see Renee Corliss again beyond this one episode, the house next door to Blanche's eventually becomes occupied by the Weston family, whom the spin-off Empty Nest focuses on. Life goes on. Emptiness was a very successful spinoff, running for seven seasons and 170 episodes, and at points, it got better ratings than the Mothership show was getting. But in order to get to this, series creator Susan Harris had to massively rework her idea for a show about what's going on next door to the Golden Girls. In fact, the backdoor pilot aired in May 1987, and the first episode of Empty Nest debuted a full TV season later in October 1988. If you watch the Golden Girls episode, it's clear that it needs work, to the point that the only bits that remain more or less intact are the set, the Corliss's living room and kitchen look exactly like the Westons, and then David Leisure, who plays lovable sleazeball Charlie Dietz on Empty Nest and in the backdoor pot, plays a very similar character named Oliver. So what went wrong here? We have a first-hand account in the form of Rita Moreno. That, another disaster, I, my life is filled with these things. Pilots and I do not get along. And what happened is that Susan Harris, the head writer, got frightfully ill during that one week we were doing, putting the pilot together and couldn't do rewrites. And it really, really, really needed rewrites badly. Every day they kept changing my character to the extent that by the time we got to do it in front of an audience, I couldn't remember line one because the attitudes had changed so many times. That was the most embarrassing experience. It was so embarrassing because the audience would start to laugh. And I was trying to make light of it. And I could not remember my lines. What's interesting about the way she lays the blame is that she identifies Susan Harris not being present as the cause, but also takes some of the ownership herself. She admits to not nailing the performance, even if she's nodding in the direction of someone else's absence as a complicating factor. It is, I suppose, a diplomatic way to say, OK, I wasn't great, but it wasn't just my fault. Now, here's the interesting thing about this failed backdoor pilot, and I don't think this is widely discussed now because, simply put, Empty Nest is not streaming. It's weird to me that Golden Palace is streaming, and the show that is the far more successful heir to Golden Girls is not, but go yell at NBC about that, I guess. But yeah, Empty Nest is the show that gets Sophia Petrillo in the end. Sophia is on Empty Nest twice as long as she was on Golden Palace. The reworked idea for Empty Nest focuses not on a mother and wife bemoaning her empty home, but on a widowed man. Still a doctor, but now played by Richard Mulligan, whom Susan Harris had worked with back on her previous hit series, Soap. While his dead wife is named Libby and not Renee, the finalized show essentially kills off the character Rita Moreno played in the backdoor pilot. Like, not only is Rita Moreno not on this show, but the character you would associate with her is, uh, to quote Rose Nyland, dead, dead, dead. As a doornail, dead, dead, dead. <laughs> Coffee? <laughs> that might seem like a weird stretch, but uh, just hold on one second. Mulligan's Dr. Harry Weston is given two daughters, Carol, played by Dinah Manoff, another soap alum, and Barbara, played by Christy McNichol. There actually is a third Weston daughter, Emily, who's away at college, and who we hear Harry talking to on the phone. And eventually she joins the show when Christy McNichol leaves after season five. So it's interesting they baked in a backup daughter right from the very start. Jenny, 
the Away at College daughter we see in the backdoor pilot sort of gets to live on. And this is another way that the finalized real version of Empty Nest reuses bits and pieces from the backdoor pilot. For the first few seasons anyway, the third daughter is off screen only and we're focused instead on Barbara and Carol, who could not be more different. Notably, while Barbara is single and enjoys an active sex life, Carol is getting over a bad divorce. Her husband, we learn, has left her for a young woman whom Carol detests. Here's how the pilot gives the viewer this info. You know, you got a personality problem, Carol. <laughs> Maybe that's why... <laughs> Maybe that's why what? I don't want to hurt you. You can't hurt me. <laughs> Please! <laughs> If I said to you, maybe that's why your husband left you for that adorable blonde, um, what's her name? Rita. <laughs> yeah, Rita. Of all the names, Rita. This was a very surprising thing to run into on Empty Nest, given the fact that the script was written by Susan Harris, who surely would have remembered that a very famous Rita starred on the earlier version of this show. The way Dinah Manoff speaks this name, after a pause and with some serious stank on it, makes it seem like this Rita is a persona non grata in the Weston household, un understandably. But that's not the only time Rita comes up in the pilot. Later on, Carol has a tearful confrontation with her dad about how him being a doctor meant that he was never around when she was a kid. This is actually a better written, better acted version of a similar speech Rita Moreno's character gives in the backdoor pilot. And you can really appreciate that Susan Harris took the time to determine what of the original pitch did not work. And then she made it work rather well. Listen to how Rita comes up a second time. Carol, it's not like I was out shooting pool and getting drunk. Your mom was my best friend, practically. Someone I could really talk to. And then she dies, and my husband leaves me for a slut named Rita. <laughs> well, you name a kid Rita, you got a damn good chance of getting a slut. <laughs> Wow, sick burn, Susan Harris. They really linger on that laugh, and Richard Mulligan actually seems a little chagrined that his character says it. And I guess take that all women named Rita, or maybe just one woman named Rita. So what can we make of this? Well, I suppose it's entirely possible that the name Rita ended up in the final script for the Empiness pilot purely as a coincidence, but given how heavily it draws from the backdoor pilot script, I just don't think that's likely. Susan Harris was clearly poring over the original version, picking out all the things that did not work, and then fixing them. It would be very hard to get past the actress who played the central role in it. Does Susan Harris have it out for Rita Moreno? I don't know either of these women, but I suppose it's possible. The shooting of that Golden Girls episode does not sound like a great experience. Per Rita Moreno, anyway. By the time she gave that interview to the Television Academy, it doesn't sound like the experience was exactly behind her. And if Susan Harris knew this was what Rita was putting out there... What happened was that they didn't pick it up. The network didn't pick it up. It was really a very, very bad show. And I, the women in the show hated it. They thought it was just one piece of dribble. But it was because Susan wasn't there to fix it. The TV is all about the fixes, really. You rarely have the same script on Friday that you started out with on Monday. But let's go with a third explanation that maybe makes Susan's use of this name seem a little bit less vindictive. Let's say Susan and Rita agree that the backdoor pilot wasn't good, and Susan regrets it being both a trying experience and an unsuccessful pitch for a new show. Regardless, the pitch that did work was built on the corpse of the one that didn't, and naming this off-screen character Rita is, maybe, a winking nod to the humble origins of what would end up becoming one of her more successful shows. She didn't do it to be mean, but just to keep the history of this lost episode part of the overall canon, and maybe even acknowledge that, hey, you know what? This episode was not great, but look, I fixed it. Does that work? Maybe? I mean, I know I like Susan Harris and Rita Moreno both, and I'd prefer to think they were cool with each other and can joke about this bad episode they were both part of. But who knows? There is more to discuss about the backdoor pilot for Empty Nest, and you can listen to our episode about it, previously a Patreon-only feature, on the Gayest Episode Ever public feed linked in show notes. Or you can just go to gayestepisodeever.com. We have 200 episodes on the public feed where we talk about TV history and the ways various episodes have spoken about or been embraced by the LGBTQ community. If you like getting into the weeds of TV history, however, please check out Backdoor Pilots at patreon.com slash gayest episode ever, where for $5 a month, you get episodes about Backdoor Pilots on Who's the Boss, Different Strokes, and Married with Children, with future ones coming about Give Me a Break, 227, The Nanny, and more. 
And by the way, guess who shows up in the series that uses a backdoor pilot to spin off Married with Children? Rita Moreno, playing a character who's a lot more interesting than Renee Corliss ever was. $5 also gets you the entire run of Weirdest Episode Ever, which is our look into the times that sitcoms have gotten a lot weirder than you'd expect from broadcast TV. Like The Family Matters with a Murderous Puppet, The Facts of Life that plays out like a slasher movie, and a Cosby show about male pregnancy that is very weird to watch in 2023. And yes, the Punky Rooster episode with the Haunted Cave is also there. I'm going to close this video with one final scene of the backdoor pilot, which wouldn't have seemed weird at the time the episode aired, but which does land very differently now, knowing that Susan Harris would eventually decide to kill off the doctor's wife in the finalized version of Empty Nest. Again, it's completely unintentional, but there's some irony in Renee Corliss's final moments being her wishing that her husband never dies, because in a sense, she's the one who ends up biting the dust. George. Hmm? Promise me one more thing. What? Promise me you'll never die. Renee Corliss, we will always remember you as being erased from existence the moment the credits on this episode rolled. End of video.